and thank all of you for being here today because you are exercising your right of freedom. Exercise, that's what we're supposed to do to keep our muscles toned, right? Well, when we exercise our freedom, that's one way to guarantee that our freedom will be strong. We're here because of Judeo-Christian values. What does that mean, Judeo-Christian values? It rolls off our lips pretty easy. We hear it in society all the time. What does that mean? Yeah. One of the simplest things is, in addition to everything that's been said here today, we work together, we live together, we prosper together in a civil society. I can speak to you as a brother in Christ, and that is the perspective from which I will speak to you today. If we do not exercise our right to practice our faith, we will become weak. Earlier today, you heard many things said of, hey, let's look at things from a fresh perspective. I would contend that just because somebody is religious does not make them a person of faith. We are in a society that is growing weak. Jesus himself fought against the Sadducees, the Pharisees. They were religious in their day, but they were not faithful to God, the God of our fathers. They were faithful to their own ambitions, to their own mercenary motives, I dare say. Jesus, Jesus was God, Jesus was man. He completed the Trinity, he was the Son of God, and by his sacrifice on the cross, the Holy Spirit fills us. I'm going to uh, share with you Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition, in addition to all of this, Take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that wherever, whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me so that I may fearlessly make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Peace to brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Those are powerful words. Words and phrases have meaning. We should do more than just take a look at the black letter words in the Bible, the red letter words in the Bible. Some have said, well, that's just emphasis added. We have people, people who claim to be religious that are adding words, detracting words, changing phrases, because they're trying to make the word their own for mercenary motives. Satan started out as Lucifer, the bringer of light. 
We know Satan is the father of all lies, who have many disciples. We have been infiltrated. Look to the Word. Study the Word. That is where the truth lies. And if it's not in the Scriptures, question it. Challenge it. Because in a society that we get further away from the truth, the more that society despise those of us who seek the truth. Jesus, if you think about it, he was one of the original rebels. Being called a Christian back in the day was an insult. Oh, you're just a Christian. What did that mean? Because you're being Christ-like. That's important. Being Christ-like. It sets us apart. It distinguishes us from those who are not believers, those without faith. When we carry that into our daily lives, we should do it with a servant's heart. And I am proud to say that I serve with fellow Christians who have that servant's heart. I'm blessed to be surrounded by colleagues that are professionals and that are believers in Christ. I ask each of you, you know, we talked about sending out our Facebook postings earlier. Tell somebody, do something. Have that conversation. Talk about how Christ has changed you, how Christ is part of your daily life. Be that example. Show that grace. There's nothing wrong with that. Do not deny our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Speak freely. Exercise your right to speak freely. Exercise your right to practice your faith freely. Those freedoms are indeed in danger. We are not the threat. Those who would take it away from us are. We need to wake up to that and we need to stand firm. Put on the full armor of God. The Bible talks about going through trials, going through the valley of death, not around it, into the lion's den. Don't take the easy way out and resist those that would just change the word a little bit here, a little bit there. Again, those are people with mercenary motives. Be on guard, be ever watchful, and always look to someone as a guide. Accountability. One of the things they teach in our church is accountability partners. Somebody to talk to. That works also in your daily life, in your service to community, as well as your service to God. Have somebody in your life that you can just talk to. Be open to correction. Be also open to growth. We have so many opportunities in this great country. Don't let anybody ever take that away from you. I thank you for your time today. God bless you all.